What do you make of these dream sequence or vision sequences that Johnny has in the course of the movie? Yes, I, I'm glad you asked that because I think it is an essential part of the film. It is not something that uh, Reed ever went into again in his subsequent films. Um, but, uh, and it is a point that Basil Wright makes in his BFI analysis of the film, uh, and he puts down particularly the scene where Johnny sees uh, people in the bubbles of the beer uh, as being artificial and therefore out of keeping with the rest of the film. I, I would argue with that uh, because I think it, by planting it right at the beginning with the, uh, the, his memory of the prison warder in the air raid shelter um, he, he does establish right at the beginning uh, that uh, Johnny is slightly delirious uh, and that therefore this is in a sense his perspective on the things that are happening to him and I, I think that they are integral to the uh, texture of the film in that uh, he is uh, in the air raid shelter, uh, feeling uh, uh, slightly uh, in a dream world, uh, and that this becomes more apparent when he hears the uh, the snatches of conversation, uh, which are, I think, uh, I mean, better than doing it without a visual uh, background. Uh, that they they are located to the people who have spoken the dialogue in the earlier part of the film. Uh, the the third one, the uh, the, the portrait of uh, Luke's wall, uh, is actually a device that he is remembering the schoolmaster who he respected and who he tried to emulate. Uh, from his school days, um, but now can't hear because of the hubbub and the uh, uh, emotional disturbances all around him, uh, and, and this uh, drives him to uh, declaim, which I think James Mason did extremely well, uh, a very bold piece of acting, uh, the, uh, the passages from uh, St. Paul. Uh, about uh, the motivation that he has uh, in uh, in what he's been trying to do for the IRA.